Bami Bafo, popularly known as Abronye DC, retained as MPP chairman for the Bunu region, bringing the nationwide exercise to an end whilst the national leadership deals with a peculiar challenge in the central region. Food Feeding Caterers Association skeptical about assurance to pay the arrears in the week ahead warns of yet another nationwide strike. National Service Personnel Association condemns and calls for a total disregard of a communique calling on its members to embark on a strike in protest of delay in payment of their arrears. Ghana National Fire Service to embark on an extensive awareness campaign for a safer environment as it begins its annual National Fire Safety Week celebration on Monday, 30th May 2022. And later on the International Front, several civilians killed by rebel fighters in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo, according to the country's army and civil society groups. Details are up shortly. Stay with us. Welcome to the program. So let's show you how the elections in the Bunu region concerning the new patriotic party went. So here are the winners. Honorable Razak Opon has won as the youth organizer. Kofi Owusu Boatin has been elected as the new secretary. Doris Asamoa has been elected as the new women's organizer. Kate Nanaya Amponsa Ejare has been elected as the second vice chairperson. Joseph Mensah has been elected as the first vice chairperson. Alhaji Osman Faisal has been elected as the Nasara coordinator. Kwame Bafo, also known as Abronya DC, has been retained as chairman in that region. Kwame Isaac has been elected as assistant secretary. Isaka Isa has been elected as treasurer and Afari Jan has been elected as organizer. All right, so we're joined by our regional correspondent in that region for more updates on that. Ibrahim Abode, thank you very much for joining me tonight. How did the elections go, particularly after allegations that was initially characterized by confusion? Yes, uh, at uh, the pastoral center here at Sunyani in the Bono uh, region, uh, about uh, 263 delegates uh, rule over here, uh, whilst we had two, uh, 26 aspirants made up of 23 men and then three women who vied for the entire 10 positions of the uh, regional uh, executive positions of the M uh, MPP. Right. So, um, as we speak, the atmosphere was calm. At the time, as expected, there were confusions here and there. There were arguments here and there. But be uh, as it is, um, as we speak now, everything is complete. Um, the winners uh, have been announced. Everyone is almost dispersing. And um, it looked like uh, whatever argument that came over is being overshadowed. And... Uh, um, announcements are being made. So over here, um, currently, you can see uh, dancing, jubilation here and there. You see um, the security being moving up and down. Uh, you see uh, some delegates really in doctor's mood because uh, their candidate uh, is the winner. So that is how it looked like here at the pastoral center in Sunyani. Right. There were issues of Tescon executives not being allowed to vote in other regions. Did the same issue happen in the Bruno region? Yes, a similar issue happened, and uh, there was a, an argument that um, some uh, constituencies were having some injunctions, and these in, uh, constituencies were Suyani East, Doma Central, and Jama. Uh, they, according to 
the story, uh, or according to the people, uh, were injuncted by Sunyani High Court uh, from taking part of the election. And this right. really brought some tension. It brought confusion there. Uh, they had to hold the elections or the counting of the votes for some time. Right. And uh, it took some time, some interventions before that issue was addressed. Right. How about those who were defeated? Have they welcomed the results? Can you come again? How about those who were defeated in the elections? Have they accepted the results? Well, uh, over here, it's not like other places that I have experienced. Uh, most of them are really agitating. I've seen the only candidate that accepted the incumbents um, being, you know, arguing that he has been, you know, um, it's, it's not genuinely, he didn't lose genuinely, and he has been robbed, uh, if, if I would say, work directly that came from his mouth and his supporters. So it, it looked like uh, some people are not really uh, happy that they lost, and they are not really, you know, confident in the elections. And as over here, there was misunderstanding between uh, the executive committee that conducted the elections, and as we speak, the secretary to that committee never showed up, and according to him, uh, he had a different point of view, and the chairman of the elections also had a different point of view in relation to injunctions and other agreements. So the tensions and the confusion started even days before the elections, and uh, it, it continued that way. So, so many people, you know, feel like uh, certain things are not done in order. So many uh, candidates who did not win are feeling like uh, they, they didn't lose generally. But um, be as it may, um, uh, the winners have been declared and no one can contest the unless uh, competent thoughts of uh, the region that can uh, tell something about that. Right, Ibrahim Abode, thank you very much for speaking to us tonight. So how did the rest of the regions vote in the just ended MPP elections? Let's take a look. So these were the voting dates per the schedule of the MPP elections and in the uh, on 27th May, Ashanti region, Bunu East region, Northern region, Northeast region, Savannah region, Upper East region, Western North region voted. The second day, 28th May 2022, also voting continued in the Ashanti region, Eastern region voted, Greater Accra region voted, Upper West region voted, Volta region voted, Oti region voted, and the Western regions also voted. On 29th May, which is today, had the Bono region voting, which our correspondent just announced to us that Abronia DC has been retained. Elsewhere in Cape Coast, there's a court injunction on the voting because a Kumfi constituency alleged that they have not elected their executives, so they have sent the issue to court and the court will hear that matter on Tuesday. Right, and you're still watching Newsnight here on Metro Television. Now, a group calling itself Concerned National Service personnel have declared its intention to embark on a demonstration over their unpaid allowances. In a release addressed to all National Service personnel in the country, the group urged its members to vacate their post and withdraw from every work they are rendering under the directive of the National Service Scheme at various agencies, effective Monday, 30th May 2022. Two. The group intends to hold a press conference, then proceed with their demonstration on the said date. We bring you that particular story in a subsequent bulletin as we are billed to speak to two members of the opposing group. You're still watching News Now here on Metro Television. You can follow the conversation live on Facebook. We're live on DSTV channel 277 as well. Let's bring you 
another story as the Ghana National Fire Service is set to embark on the annual National Fire Safety Week celebration from Monday 30th May 2022. The week-long event is themed Safer Environment, Key to Environment. Now joining us to know more about the week and its role in making the society safer is Timothy Osafo Efum, who is the PRO of the Ghana National Fire Service. Timothy, always good to have you on the show. So what informed the choice of theme, safer, environment, key to environment? Thank you, my brother. Um, good evening to all your viewers. Um, you realize that uh, two years of COVID uh, put everything uh, stable. And now that we are out of COVID, a lot of people are complaining of uh, job losses. And so this theme is to assure investors into this country that when they come and invest, we are there to ensure that their investment does not go waste. Because one key factor that any investor looks for is how safe his investment is in a country that he is um, going to invest. And therefore, uh, the, the, the theme that we came up with, right. that safer environment, key to investment. And what are the activities to expect during the week-long celebration? So there will be launching, that is tomorrow, followed by a quiz on the same day. Um, we we'll also have floats where we move through some of the principal streets in Accra, and that will be replicated in all the regions as well. We also have an open day where we open our stations and facilities to the general public to come and visit us. We have earmarked some uh, institutions, uh, public institutions, of course, that um, as well as some uh, uh, important private institutions that we also visit for inspection. And this is to give us an opportunity to see at first hand what happens in those institutions so that the flaws we observe, we advise them to correct those uh, uh, flaws. Then we also have a simulation exercise on the last day, which is Friday. Um, we have also earmarked some institutions that we need to uh, visit. So that um, the reason for this simulation exercise in, is in twofold for us to see the reaction of the occupants in those premises and also to assess ourselves that in a real situation, whether we'll be up to the task. And so these are the programs that are lined up for the week. Right. Someone will ask, why around this time? Why this time? Well, thank you very much. Um, you realize that uh, fire safety is a continuous practice. We just came out from the International Firefighters Day, which we roll out a lot of uh, activities. And so once fire safety is a continuous uh, process, right. we do not want to uh, give too much gap in between. And therefore, they need to come up with the fire safety around this particular point in time. Right. That means although we are almost in a rainy season, but it doesn't mean that fire outbreaks cannot occur, correct? No, um, what is even important for the general public to know is that it is around this uh, period, that is the rainy season, that we experience a lot more domestic fires. And so it isn't true that when it is raining, we don't uh, 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 experience fires. Fires rather occur more in our homes because we tend to use more uh, electrical gadgets to cope with uh, the, the cold that is associated with uh, the rainfall. All right. Thank you very much, Timothy Osafo Afum, for talking to us tonight. Away from that, after failing to fulfill a promise to pay caterers under the school feeding program this week, the government has once again assured the caterers they will receive their monies next week. Caterers under the school feeding program withdrew their services due to the government's failure to pay them. The caterers lament that for two terms now, they have not received their monies, and they say this is collapsing their businesses. 
They are also demanding an increase in the allocation from 93 pesos per child to three Ghana cities. Due to the high cost of food items and the current economic situation in the country, it is making it impossible for them to feed the pupils. Last week, the government stated that financial clearance had been given for the caterers to be paid this week. But in an interview, the head of public relations of the Ghana School Feeding Secretariat, Efia Siba, said the caterers should expect payments next week instead. Management of the program, in a release dated 24th May 2022, mentioned caterers who failed to cook for a number of days during the second term of 2022 will suffer deductions when their grants are finally paid. The management also said those who would fail to cook for the entire second term of 2022 will not be paid. This is not the first time the caterers are demanding an increase in the allocation. In 2021, a section of the caterers chided the Minister for Gender, Children and Social Protection, Sarah Joasafu, for failing to address their concerns. They said increasing their allocation to three cities will ensure that they are able to provide quality and adequate meals for pupils. The Ghana School Feeding Program is an initiative of the Comprehensive Africa Agricultural Development Program Pillar 3, which seeks to enhance food security and reduce hunger in line with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals on hunger, poverty and malnutrition. The government currently provides 93 pesos for a child per day for a plate of food. The amount is considered inadequate to provide an adequate and healthy diet for child development. So Helena Pia speaks for the concerned caterers and she's been responding to the latest assurance by the Secretariat. We have had this time and number and nothing good comes out of it. So it doesn't bother us anymore. We don't know what they are saying, whether they are saying is true or not. But we have our limits. When it gets there, I think the whole nation will hear from us. It's not the first time they are doing this. Even long before we started the school feeding, when they are paying, they are taking on cooking days out of it. And it's not a new thing to us. If I don't cook and you don't give me money, I don't see anything wrong with that. But when I cook and you don't give me money, that is what the problem lies. Now, what about the two times that we have cooked that you don't pay that? It's has been with them like that. What if you don't cook for even one day, you feel deducted from your payment. But this time around, we are going to put measures in place. We have our plans. We also have up to this week. That is the timeline for we, the teachers, if we don't have our money. Long before they got to their press release, that was our initial plan. So we are going to stick to that if the payment don't come. If the payment doesn't come, we're going to declare a nationwide strike. We were on strike when management met us and talked to us that if you have the means, we should start cooking. And that, as at last two weeks Monday, when we cook, by the end of Friday, we'll get our payment. We are entering into the third week, so the payment hasn't come. So by the end of this week, if the payment doesn't come, that one is not going to be if you have the means, go and cook. It's going to be the a nationwide strike. That one, if you cook, we will come to your school and what we do to you, would you like it? Yes. That was the initial agreement that we are going to settle it, so we should go and start doing the work whilst the put things in order and pay as our rest. But it seems it has become a song for them, oh go, next week it will come, oh go, next week it will come, but it never comes. I would like to use this platform to all caterers, they shouldn't panic, they shouldn't fear. Nobody has right to take their school from them. The MCEs and the regional coordinators and the zonal coordinators who are threatening to take the schools from them have no right. They should put an end to this. If they have something, they should rather help the caterers, but they shouldn't threaten them. The threat will not take them anywhere. If really they want the school feeding to work, they should have ways and means to talk to them or help them. But they should stop the threat. The threat will not help in any way. After all, when we're not doing school feeding, we're surviving. So they shouldn't threat any caterer that if you don't go to school, they are going to take your school from you. That one, it won't happen. 
So let's take you back to our earlier story where a group calling itself Concerned National Service Personnel has declared its intention to embark on a demonstration over their unpaid and hours. In a release address to all National Service Personnel in the country, the group urged its members to vacate their post and withdraw from every work they are rendering under the directive of the National Service Scheme at their various agencies Effective Monday, 30th May 2022, the group intends to hold a press conference, then proceed with their demonstration on the said date. The group is encouraging all National Service personnel in the country to comply with this directive as it is, quote, our right to demand for justice, unquote. However, another group called the National Service Personnel Association, NASPA, in a counter-release has urged the National Service Personnel across the country to disregard the release by the other group and refrain from participating in the intended demonstration. According to NASPA, the leadership of the association after engaging management and other stakeholders is assuring all its members across the country that the April allowance will be paid on or before Wednesday, June 1, 2022. Let's now speak to executive from the Concerned National Service Association, Bless Amangwa. Bless, welcome to the show. NASPA says that your organization or your group is not recognized. So why is an unrecognized group within the National Service organizing a demonstration? Right, I understand we've lost him on the line there, but we're trying to get him to answer some of these questions. You're still watching Newsnight here on Metro Television. Go for a quick break. We'll be back with more. You're welcome back. Let's take you back to our earlier story where concerned National Service Personnel Association have intended to embark on a strike on the 30th of May. But another group in the service is saying that members of the National Service should disregard that. Let's speak to Emmanuel Akosa. He is the president of NASPA. Emmanuel, welcome to the show. You have assured your members allowance for April will come in June, which is two months late. Are you doing enough for your members? Okay, um, thank you very much and good evening to your viewers. And I would like to extend our greetings to all national service personnel in the country. And we would like to re-emphasize and state that we are still committed to serving their interests and fighting for their welfare um, as we've been mandated to do so the national leadership um, would like to once again register our disappointment and our displeasure on the over long due delays of allowance um, of national service personnel in the country. I would like to state that um, management should use every means to make sure that um, this delay doesn't happen again. And we expect that as they've assured the association, NASPA, we hope that by the end of um, next week um, or by the close of the day on Wednesday, 1st June, the month of April allowance should be paid. And right. having said that, um, our attention was drawn to a communique by a group called Concern National Service Personnel um, Association which we must state and be emphasized and place it on record that we don't recognize that group and right. that NASPA is the sole association that represents over 100,000 national service personnel in the country. And we are the accredited and also recognized group. So if there is another group called themselves um, concern National Service Personnel Association, um, then we must go back and right. check. Um, I I Emmanuel, uh, kindly hold on for me because I have a rep from the Concerned uh, Service okay. Association on the line. Bless, bless. Good evening. Welcome to the show. You have been accused 
of not being a legal group within the National Service Fraternity. So why is an unrecognized group embarking on a demonstration? Hello, Bless, can you hear me? Hello? Yes. Hello? Yes. Can yes. you hear me now? Uh, I can hear you now. Yes. Uh, you... A very good evening to you and all our viewers. My name is Bless Amankwa, rightly as you said, and I'm one of the organizers for the Concerned National Service Personnel. Thank you. Um, Mr. Akosa says uh, we are not a recognized group. However, we think that um, what we are fighting for is our right. And for so long, the so-called recognized association, that is NASPA that we all know, has slackened over the fight for justice and for the welfare of the National Service personnel. And I and my friends being part of this body um, think it wise that if our executives are not fighting for us, we could also come out and then fight our way through. So right. whether we are illegitimate or not, we believe we are fighting for the best for right. all National Service personnel. So Ghana. you do accept that your group is illegitimate within the National Service Fraternity, correct? Th that's according to the words of Mr. Akosa, but I believe we are legitimate because we are fighting for something uh, that we are due. And so I was uh, borrowing the words that my president used. You did mention that NASPA has failed in addressing your needs. When you intended to embark on this demonstration, did you go into uh, a meeting with them to find out solutions to these problems, or you just came out and say that the mother body is not working for us, so let's form a coalition and embark on a demonstration? Exactly. Thank you very much for this question. At the beginning, we didn't have um, any engagements with them. But just this recent Friday, I myself sent a letter to the Central Regional President of NASPA. And um, the confusion is um, the claims that Mr. Akosa here with me is making that um, um, we are illegitimate and they don't recognize us. Because yesterday, Saturday, 28th of May, Mr. Akosa uh, chose a delegate that is in the person of Mr. Um, Sadiq Abubakar to meet with our group in a discussion. And so when they have had our letter and also sent a delegation to speak with us, I am confused why he is making this claim right. that um, they don't recognize us and we are illegitimate. Right. Let me come back to you, Emmanuel. You did admit that you met with leadership of the concerned uh, National Service Association to refrain from embarking on a demonstration and here you are denouncing them. If they are illegitimate as you claim, why did you meet them in the first place and why have you come out to disown them? Okay, thank you very much. So I would like to state that NASPA has structures. We have the national leadership, we have the regional leadership and also the district leadership. And the fact that the association NASPA, um, represented by the central regional president, meeting them doesn't validate the fact that they are recognized. But we did that in the sense that they are national service personnel and they have genuine reasons um, to also voice out. Because I want to believe that we are all fighting for one cause. We are all fighting for um, a good cause, something that is due national service personnel. So if the central regional president represents... Hello, Emmanuel. And I would like to um, 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 state that the national leadership don't want to resort to any um, um, radical action without right. exhausting or diplomatic and also negotiation channels. Okay. And as we've been already done and what we are doing, we've been using negotiation and diplomatic ways to make sure that national service personnel have received what is due them. And I can give you that over the weekend, we met management of the association and you can confirm that due to the negotiation and also mediation, 
they've confirmed to the association that by Wednesday, 1st June, payment of APO allowance are going to be made. Okay. So we like to state that whilst they want to resort to strike action and also um, 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 other means, we would like to state that national leadership are really working. And right. we want to exhaust all channels, like mediation, negotiation, and consensus before if you have to take any other means, be it demonstration or strike action, then we go over it. So I would like to state that right. we don't recognize any other group. And NASPA is the sole group that represents national service personnel in the country. I would like to state that we are committed making sure that the interest and the welfare of national service personnel in the country are okay. catered for and we we'll hold back. To right. making sure that that has been achieved. Okay, let me let me go on to Bless. Bless, can you hear me? Well, I understand we've lost Bless on the line, but Emmanuel, of course, I thank you very much for speaking to us, and Bless also for speaking to us tonight here on News Night. The bulletin is also live on our Facebook channel at Metro TV Ghana, and also on Twitter at Metro TV GH. These were two leaders of the concerned national service personnel and the national service personnel association disagreeing on a number of issues let's move on government spokesperson on governance and security pargrave wachidankwa says although there are a number of reasons why terrorism is on the rise people's mindset to perpetuate evil and chaos is a factor contributing the increase of terrorist activities and groups the Ministry of National Security on May 17, 2022, issued a terrorist threat warning. The Ministry explained that every Ghanaian should be vigilant because of the recent attacks against neighboring countries and that it believed Ghana was being targeted. As part of efforts to confront the growing terrorism threat, the Ministry of National Security called on the Ghana National Association of Teachers to help in the education campaign. The General Secretary of the Association, Thomas Tanko Musa, cited the role poverty plays in pushing people to join terrorist groups. There is a scripture in the Bible says that don't let me become poor so that I'll be tempted. So temptation is everywhere. Even in the Lord's Prayer, we say that lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Temptation is always with us and evil is always present. And the only way that we can help, I mean, we can help get, get our children protected is by providing them the basic necessities of life. Particularly in underserved communities, I believe that they should be provided. Because if you don't do it, and an individual comes in to provide these things for them, certainly the, that particular individual can end up indoctrinating them. And whatever the person tells them, they will end up getting, I mean, doing it. And that will not be safe for us. Government spokesperson on governance and security, Paul Grave Boache Dankwa says, most people are swayed into terrorist groups because these groups have the ability to sell their ideology and attract people to do evil. The number of reasons that um, contribute to persons either wanting to join terror groups um, to be able to perpetuate certain acts of um, chaos. I think that the first is really just um, a mindset of an ideology where people um, are really just um, inculcated into an ideological understanding and then they sway their soul to want to destroy. And Paul Grove Boachidankwa also noted that terrorists thrive on vulnerability of people when recruiting persons to join their group. Terrorists take advantage of vulnerabilities. I mean, that's how I like to put it in that perspective. As we even speak about poverty, we look at the vulnerabilities. And so terrorists every now and then will look at um, the vulnerabilities that are available and um, want to take advantage of those vulnerabilities. And so clearly in conversations, we are always um, enlightening the young people um, all across the continent and even in country to ensure that um, they get job opportunities. Let's to stay on security as the director of prisons in charge of operations at the Ghana Prison Service, Samuel Akobiri, has declared the stance of the service against the retainment of the death penalty sentence in the Constitution. Capital punishment requires that certain crimes are punishable by death. Ghana's 1992 constitution makes the death penalty mandatory for three main offenses. These are treason under section 1 is 0, murder, section 4 6, and genocide, section 4 9 e. 
The National Commission for Civic Education, NCCE, as part of its mandate to encourage constitutionalism and to mark 30 years of uninterrupted constitutional rule and peaceful coexistence in Ghana, held a forum with the Ghana Prison Service to solicit their views on calls by the public for constitutional reforms. According to the Deputy Chairman in Charge of Operations, Samuel Asari, the security services have a role to play in the survival of the Constitution. We have singled out security agencies in particular for this special engagement. Yes, the Constitution has some deficits, but it is not a bad law for us. This Constitution has saved us well, and I call on all Ghanaians to stand up in defense of the Constitution, even at the peril of their lives. The director of prisons in charge of operations at the Ghana Prison Service, on a spot, reviewed the services against the retainment of the death penalty. Our premier role is to reform people. We do not think that people who are condemned to die must die because we think that we have the ability to reform them. They may not have to be released from prison outright, but stay in prison probably for the rest of their life they will be taken through their reformation process and they could be useful. I think we are all aware of the fact that in some countries, prisons are allotted some contracts to produce certain valuable items, maybe for education, book, uh, like chairs or even books. We have the capacity to do that. So most of these people who are supposed to, be, to have died because they have committed crimes could be changed and reformed and trained to produce some of these items for people. Some more further used the opportunity to appeal to have the name of the Ghana Prison Service changed to Ghana Correctional Service. We want the name to be changed from Ghana Prison Service to Ghana Correctional Service. This is in line with the international best practices. People are moving forward, we should not be seen moving backwards. The National Commission for Civic Education, at the end of the forum, presented copies of the Constitution to the Prison Service for reference. Reporting for Metro News, Rosemary Anyingba, Accra. Thank you very much, Rosemary, for that report. News 9 to 10 after this break. Welcome back. Business News is next. In business tonight, Ghana has been classified among 10 countries that are at risk of debt distress. The country was called a mark of 10, meaning it has a 50% or higher chance of defaulting its loans in the next five years. This comes after the country's debt reached an alarming level of 391 billion Ghana cities as of the first quarter of 2022. The nine other countries alongside Ghana captured by the CFR Sovereign Risk Tracker are Argentina, Lebanon, Pakistan, Russia, Sri Lanka, Tunisia, Ukraine, Venezuela, and Egypt. Egypt is the only country with slightly below 50% chance of defaulting in its sovereign loans. Ghana is the only sub-Saharan African country among the top 10 countries, although North African neighbors Egypt and Tunisia also feature on the list. According to the data, Ghana's short-term debt and current account situation is equivalent to 79% of its reserves. Whilst the current account and fiscal balance to GDP for 2022 are estimated at a deficit of 3.6% and 8.4% respectively. The International Monetary Fund had already stated in its April 2022 fiscal monitor that Ghana's public debt stock is not going to take a nosedive anytime soon as it is expected to hit 84 0.6% of GDP by the end of the year. The country's debt to GDP ratio, it said, will increase from 2022 to 88.4% in 2026 before falling to 87.4% in 2027. But prior to that, it will record relatively same debt to GDP ratio of 84% in 2022 and 2023 and later surge to 85% and 86% in 2024 and 2025 respectively. 
Now, President of the African Development Bank, Akinwumi Adesina, has hinted of the institution's commitment of providing electricity to 200 million Africans in the Sahel region. This forms part of the continent's target of distributing electricity to the over 600 million Africans who do not have access to electricity to assist Africa's industrialization agenda. And I think, as you heard on the panel, during the ADF 16, we're talking about a special set aside for climate because nine out of the 10 most vulnerable countries to climate change in Africa are, I mean, are in Sub-Saharan Africa, but 100% of them are the ADF countries. We'll be able to do the desert of power, which is in the Sahel, that will allow us to be able to construct 10,000 megawatts of electricity that will provide electricity to 250 million people. That will be the largest solar zone in the world, God help us. So let's, the next ADF 16, help ADF to go to scale, to scale up hope. Why not? A, my son Antonio had a dream. I hope that sometime. ADF 50, at 50, one day we'll be able to say ADF at $50 billion. Because I like everything that has five in it, high fives. I would like you to please look at the person next to you, give them a COVID-19 compliant high five, and said high five to ADF. And in other news not related to business, managing director of JA Plant Pool and SA Automobile, Ajua Frimponi Makubwatin has expressed her appreciation to all workers of JA Plant Pool for their hard work over the years. Speaking at a cooking competition for the employees, she said JA Plant Pool has shocked all of its successes due to their dedication and as such encouraged them to stay steadfast. Hiring a rental, finance, administration and human relation, warehouse, technical and the marketing and customer care departments keenly contested for the bragging rights of this year's cooking competition. The competition is one of the many activities outlined to mark the Just Pawn Group employee month. Speaking to Metro News, the managing director of JA Plants Pool and SA Automobile Ajoa Frempo Mani Makubwatin expressed her appreciation to the workers and encouraged them to keep delivering on their duties. According to her, the Human Resource Department has prepared other interesting activities for the rest of the year. We want to celebrate them. Without them, there will be no business. Even when the customers come and we have nobody to serve them, we wouldn't be in business. We appreciate them over the years. Uh, they've done tremendously well and we know that we can still do more so I encourage my colleagues that we should keep on doing what we do to better what we do and churn out good figures at the end of the day. We hope to have this become a yearly thing so every May you will see us celebrating our staffs but beyond that the HR department they've rolled out a lot of activities that uh, we, we hope to it will help to be able to bring up teamwork and still build the morale of the people. So we have a whole program lined up for the whole year. At the end of the competition, the finance department was declared winners of the competition with the marketing and customer care and also the warehouse department placing first and second runner-up respectively. Expressing their joy, winners of the competition described the competition as a creative way of appreciating employees and appealed to management to make it an annual event. Generally, I'll say it is, it is a very good and a very creative way of celebrating our employees and then we'd like to congratulate management and tell management that they should keep it up and then every year as it started, it should continue like that. J Plant Pool is a subsidiary of the Jospon Group and a leading supplier of heavy-duty trucks, earth-moving equipment, luxurious buses, among other things. The competition was held at the premises of the company and was sponsored by Unga. International news is next.
Several civilians have been killed by rebel fighters in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo, according to the country's army and civil society groups. A spokesman for the country's army told the AFP news agency that more than a dozen people have been killed in Saturday's attack, while the Red Cross put a death toll at 24. The security tracker, which monitors violence in the region via a team of experts on the ground, said at least 27 civilians have died. A Nigerian police say they have launched an investigation after 31 people died in a crash in the southern city of Port Harcourt. It happened in a sports field on Saturday morning where a church was handing out food to the poor, some of whom had waited there overnight. That's it for now, but before we go, a look again at our top stories. Ofi Bafo, popularly known as Abronya DC, retained as MPP chairman for the Bono region, bringing the nationwide exercise to an end, whilst the national leadership deals with a peculiar challenge in the central region. School feeding caterers association skeptical about assurance to pay their arrears in the week ahead, warns of yet another nationwide strike. National Service Personnel Association condemns on call for a total disregard of a communique calling on its members to embark on a strike in protest of delay in payment of their arrears. We spoke with leadership of the association. The Ghana National Fire Service is to embark on an extension awareness campaign for a safe environment as it begins its annual National Fire Safety Week celebration on Monday, 30th May, 2022. And we took you elsewhere where several civilians killed by rebel fighters in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo, according to the country's army and civil society groups. My name is Kenneth Jesse. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.